I have one, but I have an opinion. All you need to know, I have an opinion. <laughs> right or wrong, I'll have one. It's the coffee. I shouldn't have had a coffee. What's up, guys? Rob Peasel back with another playoff breakdown, and I'm very pleased to be joined by, well, someone who spent his entire career needling other players, and ever since then, I feel like he has spent his entire life, well, needling me. PJ Stock joining us on this breakdown. PJ, thanks for doing this. Hey, bud. Yeah, buddy. You look taller today. You look taller today. I don't know if it's the chair or, I don't know, the camera, but you look taller today. Okay, PJ, let's get to some of the things I want to talk about. A lot has to do with the North Division. So let's dive right in and talk about the Jets and the Oilers. And before we even get to Connor McDavid, on a scale of 1 to 10, how shocked were you? Not necessarily that the Jets beat the Oilers, but the fact that it was a sweep. So the sweep part, yes. But I like Winnipeg over over anything. Uh, because of just the way they call the playoffs, the way the, the depth of the, you know, the, the question mark for Winnipeg was their defense. Besides that, I think their top six could compete against any top six in the National Hockey League. And their goaltender doesn't get enough credit. He's one of the best in the world as well. They can run and gun as a forward team. And if they make mistakes, well, that's why their great goalie is there. If you have a goalie that's not, you know, as 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 experienced, we use that term as as a price or I guess as a hell of a, you got to guard him, you got to protect him. So, you know, over the last few years, I think that top crew for Winnipeg has always been there. I thought the defensive had question marks, and their goalie has kind of been progressively getting better. He's there, he's there. So I like I like this team because there's way too many question marks with the Oilers over a seven game series. And I've seen throughout the year, you've been able to shut down McDavid and Dreisaitl. And that's the goal of this series, shut them down. Okay, we'll let the depth beat us. And it's hard to stop two of the best players in the world. They did it. I've said this a few times since this series ended. I wish I had the hockey pucks to actually take the Winnipeg Jets because the writing seemed to be on the wall. You had a team that was just stumbling going into the playoffs in the Winnipeg Jets. You had a team that was riding high with the Edmonton Oilers. I just didn't have the guts to do it. I didn't want to bet against Connor McDavid. It's the only sport that's really like this. Maybe basketball with Chad, but they completely call all the rules differently in the playoffs. And that's why I like Winnipeg because they're more of a physical team. They're, they're bigger. They can play a little bit more ugly uglier than I think the Edmonton Oilers can. Uh, and that's why their top guys can play a little slappy in the face type hockey. And that's what they kind of did in this, right? They tried to get McDavid off his game. They tried, and during the regular season, they'd be given, you know, that's a six minute penalty. That's a seven minute penalty. You can't touch McDavid. Playoff comes around the corner. And I just love to know the meetings that the referees have. Like, they're like, okay, listen, the guys would never be able to survive an 82 game season with the regular rules. I'm sorry, with the playoff rules. Let's kind of call things a little tighter during the regular season. Let the playoffs come here. Ah, let the boys have fun. And every series in the playoffs has been spectacular for the physicality. And I'm sorry you don't have hockey pucks on you and weren't able to make that bet. But that was uh, one of the teams that I've, I've liked Edmonton. Sorry, I've liked Winnipeg for the last five years. Okay, before we get to McDavid, I do want to touch on what you just talked about. It seems like this year, more than in past years, people are complaining about the refereeing and not necessarily calls that are missed, but the fact that there seems to be two rule books, one for the regular season and one for the playoffs. What are your thoughts on that? There's a there's a happy medium. I, I do think like I love the playoff hockey. When it gets like the refs are like the guys that the pucks in the corner, whoever wants it more is gonna come out of the corner with I, I like those kind of prison rules, as you want to call it, you know, I, I like that. Uh, only because that's the only way I can come out of the corner with the puck. Like, Florida Tampa has been, like, crazy. Saint, uh, the St. Louis series, Colorado was crazy. Uh, Boston, Washington, crazy. And why not? It's not one set of referees. A whole bunch of them are calling it different. That's why I'm saying, is it a meeting that they all get together and they're like, I don't know what it is. I love it. I get more upset during the regular season when they call it completely the other way. Okay, Peach, let's talk about Connor McDavid. I know you talked a lot about this on your Instagram live. Um, the very fact that Canadians sometimes have trouble criticizing superstars. And he's starting to fall into that category of 
can he lead a team to the Stanley Cup? Uh, and, you know, we've seen even the greatest players of all time, the Wayne Gretzky's, the Mario Lemieux's, the Steve Eisenman's, the Alexander Ovechkin's. Uh, there was a point early in their career where people were questioning whether they had it. They had that certain it that could lead a team to the cup. Um, are we starting to get there with Connor McDavid? Yeah, my thing on Connor, he's such an exciting player whenever he touches the puck. He's, he's the best in the world, the most exciting player, and you think of other sports. He is such so much faster, and I don't think people give him enough credit for how fast his brain has to be, because he does things at such elite speeds. My thing, though, is the defensive competitiveness at times. Because he knows he's going to score, he can cheat on the offensive side of the puck, and, and some teams do that. But when you're when your team struggles on that backside, and you know Mike Smith had a, had a pretty good year, but you don't have the, the same decor or goaltending that some of the other teams do, Connor McDavid is on the offensive side. I don't think he's there yet. The league can't afford to not have this guy competing annually. He's he should be. He's every night. He's can't miss TV. Okay, over to a team that you follow very closely, the Montreal Canadiens. I'm going to let you do most of the talking here, but I'll, I'll just start with this. Uh, is it as simple as this is a team that's got goaltending defense, but they don't have a superstar or even a top line to keep up offensively? Go back to Winnipeg for a quick second. They have an amazing goalie. And what do they do? Our defense could be okay because our goalie is going to make saves. Let's load up offensively. You know, the Canadians built themselves a team year after year that they're so worried about the back end that Carey Price is, you know, uh, everyone crowns him as the number one goalie on the planet. So why do you need so many big, strong, like, why do you need so much defense in front of them? We should be trying to create goals. You know you have a great goal. You have no one story for him. So during the regular, regular season, his stats are kind of whatever. But his playoff stats, forget about the wins, but his save percentage is, 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 should be giving him playoff wins. They don't have any offense in front of them. You win down the middle, three defense, obviously four, and a strong goal. They have nothing down the middle that helps drive the offense. I can't believe how many general managers have let this go by. Bergeron's been there for nine years now. And I, I guess, again, I like the fucking enemy signing at the time because they didn't have anyone else. You need some veteran leadership offensive guy to put down the pipe and you're gonna have to sacrifice something on the wing or on the back end to do so, but it doesn't matter, because you'll get off, and guess what? You have a goalie, so you have something that a lot of other teams don't. DJ, always fun talking to you. Thanks for doing this, man. Hey, I carried you again.